Ecofeminism. The term ecofeminism is used to describe a feminist approach to understanding ecology. Feminist thinkers draw on the concept of gender to theorize on the relationship between humans and the natural world. The term was coined by the French writer Francois de Aubon in her book Le Feminisme ou la Mort, 1974. Ecofeminist theory asserts that a feminist perspective of ecology does not place women in the dominant position of power, but rather calls for an egalitarian society in which there is no one dominant group. Today, there are several dimensions of ecofeminism, including liberal ecofeminism. Ooh, spoke. This, this. Spiritual cultural ecofeminism and social socialist ecofeminism or materialistic, no, materialist ecofeminism. There are also many interpretations of ecofeminism and how it might be applied to social thought, including ecofeminist art, social justice, and political philosophy, re religion, contemporary feminism, and poetry. Ecofeminism addresses the parallels between the oppression of nature and the oppression of woman to emphasize the idea that both must be understood in order to properly recognize how they are connected. These parallels include, but are not limited to, seeing women and nature as property, seeing men as the curators of culture and women as the curators of nature, and how men dominate women and humans dominate nature. Charlene Spretnik has offered one way of categorizing ecofeminist work, though the study of political theory as well as history, too, through the belief and study of nature-based religions, through environmentalism, anti-oppression, gendering nature, ecofeminist framework, concepts, modern science and ecofeminism, vegetarian ecofeminism, materialist ecofeminism, spiritual ecofeminism, cultural ecofeminism, environmental movements, movements in the 70s and 80s, 1990s through present, movements based on literature, major critiques, theorists, see also references for the reading while I'm reading the rest of that. <laughs> Anti-oppression. According to Francois Aubin in her book Le Feminism or La Mort or the Death, I guess. Ecofeminism relates the oppression and domination of all marginalized groups, women, people of color, children, the poor, to the oppression and the domination of nature, animals, land, water, air, etc. In the book, the author argues that oppression, domination, exploitation, and colonialization from Western patriarchal society has directly caused irreversible environmental damage. Francois de Aubin was, a, was an activist and organizer, and her writing encouraged the eradication of all social injustice, not just injustice against women and the environment. This tradition includes a number of influential texts, including Women in Nature, Susan Griffin, 1978, The Death of Nature, Carolyn Merchant, 1980, and Jain slash Ecology, Mary Daly, 1978. These texts helped to propel the association between the domination by man on women and the domination of culture on nature. From these texts, feminist activism of the 1980s linked ideas of ecology and the environment, movements such as the National Toxics Campaign, Mothers of East Los Angeles, Mila, and Native Americans for a Clean Environment, NASI, were led by women devoted to the issues of human health and environmental justice. Justice. Writing in this circle discussed ecofeminism drawing from Green Party politics, peace movements. Peace, man. Direct action movements. What is a direct action movement? Modern ecofeminism or feminist eco-criticism eschews such essentialism and instead focuses more on intersectional questions such as how the nature-culture split enables the oppression of female and non-human bodies. It is also an activist and academic movement that sees critical connections between the exploitation of nature and the domination over women, both caused by men. 
gendering nature. One interpretation of ecofeminist theory is that capitalism reflects only pa um, paternalistic and patriarchal values. This notion implies that the effects of capitalism have not also be benefited women and have led to a harmful split between nature and culture. In the 1970s, early ecofeminists discussed that the split can only be healed by the feminine instinct for nurture and holistic knowledge of nature's processes. Processes. I wish it was prowess, but it's processes. Several feminists make the distinction that it is not because women are female or feminine that they relate to nature, but because of their similar states of oppression by the same male-dominant forces. The marginalization is evident, axiomatic, in the gendered language used to describe nature and the animalized language used to describe woman. Some discourses link women specifically to the environment because of their traditional social role as a nurturer and caregiver. Eco-feminists following in this line of thought believe that these connections are illustrated through the coherence of socially labeled values associated with femininity, such as nurturing, which are present both among women and in nature. Valdana Shiva says that women have a special connection to the environment through their daily interactions, and this connection has been ignored. According to Shiva, no, Shiva, she, Shiva, women in subsistence economies who produce wealth in partnership with nature have been experts in their own right of holistic and ecological knowledge of nature's processes. She makes the point that these alternative modes of knowing, which are oriented to the social benefits and sustenance needs, are not recognized by the capitalist reductionist paradigm because it fails to perceive the interconnectedness of nature or the connection of women's lives, work, and knowledge with the creation of wealth. Shiva blames this failure on the Western patriarchal perceptions of development and progress. According to Shiva, patriarchy has labeled women, nature, and other groups not knowing the economy as unproductive. I love turtlenecks. Do do. Ecofeminist framework. In the 1993 essay entitled Ecofeminism Toward Global Justice and Planetary Health, authors Greta God and Lori Gooden outlined what they call the ecofeminist framework. The essay provides a wealth of data and statistics, in addition to outlying the theoretical aspects of ecofeminist critique. The framework described is intended to establish ways of viewing and understanding our current global situations so that we we are better understand how we this is a weird sentence so that we are better understand how we arrived at this point and what may be done to ameliorate the ills god and gudin argue that there are four sides to this framework uh, the mechanistic materialist model of the universe that resulted from the scientific revolution and the subsequent subwick 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 sub uh, subwick sub 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 subsequent sub 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 and the subsequent reduction of all things into mere resources to be optimized dead inert matter to be used two the rise of patriarchal religions and their establishment of gender hierarchies along with their denial of eminent Imminent, imminent divinity, self and other dualisms, and the inherent power of domination ethic it entails, capitalism, and its claimed intrinsic need for the exploitation, destruction, and instrumental. Oh, gosh. Instrumentalization. Instrumentalization of animals, earth, and people for the sole purpose of creating wealth. They hold that these four factors have brought us to what ecofeminists see as a separation between nature and culture. That is, for them, the root source of our planetary, Ill, planetary ills.